as I told you last time that the uh, modality of uh, nervous control is not complete yet so dear uh, let's not forget about uh, the gastrointestinal sensory nervous system you should know that uh, many efferent sensory nerve fibers innervate the gut and uh, cell bodies of these efferent fibers are located in uh, enteric nervous system or dorsal root ganglia of spinal cord keep in mind that uh, sensory nerve endings originate in the gastrointestinal epithelium or the gut wall and uh, from here the efferent signals they are sent to both the plexuses of uh, enteric system and uh, in addition to enteric system the efferents they are also sent to uh, prevertebral ganglia of the sympathetic system uh, spinal cord and uh, also to brain stem in uh, vagus nerves as a matter of fact 80% of the fibers in uh, vagus nerve they are efferent now the stimulation of uh, uh, gut receptors alters the activity of uh, gastrointestinal effector cells by um, either eliciting neural reflexes or the secretion of uh, hormones and uh, that's how the sensations they are uh, exerted through enteric nervous system as far as the receptors of uh, the gi tract are concerned these uh, mainly are uh, mechanoreceptors and uh, chemoreceptors and these receptors they respond to uh, to almost anything to stretch osmolarity and ph also the presence of uh, substrate and uh, the end products of digestion so as a result they initiate the reflexes that uh, either activate or inhibit the digestive glands plus these reflexes they mix lumen contents and move them along but first uh, you must know that uh, which fibers are involved so the sensory efferents are uh, the splanchnic nerves which are the mixed nerves and the vagal nerves as i already told you that uh, 80% uh, fibers of uh, vagus nerve they are efferent now the uh, sensory fibers of these nerves they can be stimulated by the irritation of gut mucosa or excessive distension of the gut or the presence of uh, specific chemical substances in gut and then uh, the signals through these fibers they can cause the excitation or the inhibition of uh, intestinal movements or secretion so what are the uh, functions of uh, this gastrointestinal sensory system uh, you see they can uh, elicit local reflexes within the gut wall itself or even they can cause reflexes that are related to gut from either the uh,
prevertebral ganglia or the basal regions of brain. Uh, here the mention of uh, reflex it uh, leads us to a very important topic of uh, gastrointestinal physiology which is uh, reflex control of uh, gastrointestinal tract. So let's start with that. There are uh, three types of reflexes which are essential to the gastrointestinal control and these uh, uh, reflexes are supported not only by the anatomical arrangement of the enteric nervous system but they are also supported by the connection of this enteric nervous system with the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system. Generally, we uh, classify the gastrointestinal reflexes into three types. The ones which are um, solely gut wall reflexes, then a reflex from uh, gut to ganglia and then back to the gut. And finally, the reflex type which starts from gut, goes to central nervous system and then back to gut. And now uh, you need to know a uh, little detail of uh, each type of reflex so that you could write something in your exam because this topic it may be a university question. The reflexes that occur entirely within uh, the enteric nervous system of uh, gastrointestinal tract they control the gastrointestinal secretions, peristalsis and mixing and they also control the local inhibitory effects. Now uh, the ones from uh, gastrointestinal tract to prevertebral sympathetic ganglia and then back to the gastrointestinal tract they transmit the signals long distance to other areas of gastrointestinal tract. Uh, here I give you a few examples such as uh, gastrocolic reflex through which the signals from the stomach they cause the evacuation of colon. Then um, there is a enterogastric reflex in which the signals from the colon and small intestine they are used to inhibit stomach motility and secretion. The colonoileal reflex is uh, another example through which the signals from colon they inhibit the emptying of ileal contents into the colon. Now the uh, Final type of uh, reflexes are from the gastrointestinal tract to spinal cord or the brain stem and then back to the gastrointestinal tract and uh, the examples they include the uh, reflexes from stomach and duodenum to the brain stem and then back to stomach by way of uh, vagus nerves. Um, pain reflex is another example which causes general inhibition of entire gastrointestinal tract. But the most important example is the defecation reflex which uh, travels from colon and rectum to the spinal cord and the signals from uh, spinal cord produce powerful colonic, rectal and abdominal contractions which are required for defecation. So uh, you can see that uh, how intricately 
our enteric nervous system is connected to the higher centers but the enteric circuits they could be independent also parasympathetic nervous system and sympathetic nervous system nerves they usually synapse with the the components of uh, enteric nervous system and enteric nervous system nerves they are organized into myenteric and uh, submucosal plexuses but uh, many gastrointestinal actions they are regulated solely by the neural circuits in which a mechanoreceptor or a chemoreceptor that is stimulated in mucosa and uh, transport these signals back to the neurons in submucosal plexus which stimulate other neurons in the submucosal and myenteric plexus and finally that results into the regulation of endocrine or secretory cells now the <clears throat> interesting bit is that the neurons of the enteric nervous system they are uh, supported by enteric glial cells which are structurally and functionally resemble the astrocytes in brain uh, in this figure you can uh, see two types of uh, enteric neurons uh, uh, so they are located either in the myenteric plexus or submucosal plexus preferentially and uh, one more interesting thing is the application of uh, certain toxins such as uh, tetrodotoxin it will abolish the action potential in uh, S type of enteric neurons now uh, here is a long list of uh, different types of neurotransmitters secreted by enteric neurons and uh, some of which I have already mentioned in the previous lecture Uh, you can see that uh, some of them are excitatory, others uh, inhibitory, and uh, yet some other which have uh, multiple functions. And uh, then there are some which have uh, specific functions. Uh, say a few interesting ones are uh, uh, substance P which uh, contracts the wall muscle and increases the slivery secretions. Um, then there are encephalins which uh, constrict the circular muscle around the sphincters and decrease the intestinal secretions. Another one is uh, gastric releasing peptide commonly it is called GRP and it acts on the glands only and increases the gastrin secretion um, there is also neuropeptide Y which relaxes the wall muscle and decreases the intestinal secretions oh. Now these uh, uh, neurotransmitters which are involved in the gastrointestinal regulation they can be classified under different criteria also as you can see in this uh, list. But more interesting thing is that how a variety of action is achieved through them. Uh, you can use the example of uh, submucosal plexus where secretory neurons primarily use uh, VIP and acetylcholine as uh, neurotransmitters and uh, sensory nerves they use substance P. 
Also take the example of uh, myenteric plexus where the motor neurons they use acetylcholine and uh, nitric oxide. Uh, sensory neurons use uh, substance P and the interneurons they use acetylcholine and serotonin. Still the uh, pharmacological importance of uh, certain enteric neurotransmitters is extensive because they are used elsewhere in the body also. Now uh, take an example of a person on uh, the serotonin reuptake inhibitors and uh, what are these? Uh, in common language these are uh, antidepressants. Now these drugs they alter the serotonin levels regulating the gastrointestinal tract also. So the patient may experience decreased gastrointestinal motility as a side effect. Alright, mm, now let me introduce you to the neuromuscular junctions in uh, gastrointestinal tract. Uh, it is the site where uh, mm, neurotransmitters are released from uh, exons of uh, motor neurons to act on uh, smooth muscle fibers, on uh, the interstitial cells of Kajal, and also glands and blood vessels. Histologically, uh, these are uh, simpler structures than the motor end plates of skeletal muscles and the neurotransmitters, they are released from uh, multiple varicosities of the motor exon which they, they spread out along the exon. Uh, you can uh, consider it uh, as an adaptation of uh, simultaneous application of the neurotransmitter to a large number of muscle fibers from a small number of uh, motor axons. Now the synaptic transmission itself in the enteric nervous system it is modulated through presynaptic and uh, postsynaptic actions. First we move on to uh, the postsynaptic actions where the slow excitatory postsynaptic potentials they cause long lasting responses of uh, gut effectors during uh, physiological stimuli and the fast uh, excitatory potentials they cause uh, rapid transfer of information between the elements of uh, enteric microcircuits. Well, the uh, slow inhibitory postsynaptic potentials, they, they also exist. For example, the shunting of blood by the sympathetic stimulation during exercise. Now, what about the presynaptic potentials? You see, the uh, presynaptic uh, inhibition, it's a mechanism for selective shutdown of a microcircuit. While the presynaptic uh, facilitation, it is uh, selective enhancement. With that, uh, my dear students, <clears throat> it was all about the nervous regulation of uh, the gastrointestinal functions. And uh, I want to shift to the description of uh, non-neural regulation now which could be um, endocrine regulation where the endocrine enteroendocrine cells they secrete regulatory peptide or hormones that travel via bloodstream to the remote target organs for example uh, gastrin or secretin or it could be uh, paracrine regulation in which the regulatory peptides created by the entero and uh, entero endocrine cell it acts on a nearby target cell by diffusion through the interstitial space and uh, the examples they include uh, uh, histamine and uh, then uh, there is a 5-hydroxy tryptamine
so uh, let's start with the hormonal control first as i already told you that uh, the gut hormones they constitute a group of hormones which are secreted <coughs> by the entero endocrine cells in the stomach pancreas and small intestine that control the various functions of digestive organs uh, although these uh, entero endocrine cells they do not form the en uh, endocrine glands uh, but they are they are spread throughout the digestive tract and they exert their autocrine and the paracrine actions that uh, integrate all of the gastrointestinal function now the gastrointestinal hormones they are released into portal circulation and they exert the physiological actions on target cells with the specific receptors for the hormone and these effects of the hormones they persist even after all the nervous connection they have been severed here uh, is the family tree uh, you can see uh, a family tree of uh, the uh, gastrointestinal hormones but uh, we will discuss only the uh important ones so uh let's start with the uh, gastrin it is a polypeptide hormone in nature and uh, it is secreted in two forms g34 and uh, g17 it is produced by g cells in the antrum portion of the gastric mucosa during the gastric phase of gastric secretion but it is uh, also secreted in the duodenum and uh, jejunum during the intestinal phase the uh, secretion of uh, gastrin is uh, stimulated by the presence of food in stomach especially the peptides and the amino acids or the stimulation of uh, local nervous plexus in stomach and intestine and also stimulated by the vasovagal reflex during uh, the gastric phase of gastric excretion now for uh, gastrin there are some uh, inhibitory factors also and uh, Uh, the luminal ones uh, of these inhibitory factors they are the acid and somatostatin while uh, in the blood these are uh, secretin uh, gip vip glucagon and calcitonin now see that the release is uh, inhibited by highly acidic ph like uh, less than 2 and this acid in the antrum it inhibits gastric secretion by two ways either by the direct action on the g cells or by stimulating the release of uh, somatostatin by d cell so you can guess that in condition where the parietal cells they are damaged like in uh, pernicious anemia the gastrin levels they would be elevated now uh jot down the actions of gastrin because these are important even for the viva questions and uh, uh the other stuff for the mcqs so uh gastrin stimulates gastric glands to secrete gastric juice with more pepsin and hydrochloric acid because it induces the insertion of uh, potassium hydrogen atpase pumps into the apical membrane of parietal cells and uh, these cells they in turn increase the hydrogen ion release then the gastrin accelerates the gastric uh, motility 
and may also promote the growth of gastric mucosa. More important is that it stimulates the pancreatic juice secretion. Uh, Zollinger Ellison syndrome or uh, gastrinoma that's a condition in which the gastrin levels they are abnormally elevated. Now in uh, Zollinger Ellison syndrome gastrin is produced at excessive levels often by the gastrinoma of the duodenum or the pancreas. It usually occurs in uh, autoimmune gastritis where the immune system attacks the parietal cells resulting in uh, hypochlorhydria which causes elevated gastrin levels in attempt to compensate. But eventually all the parietal cells they are lost and hence the loss of negative feedback on the gastrin also. Now there is uh, pentagastrin also which is uh, synthetic gastrin. Uh, it is composed of uh, terminal 4 amino acids of uh, natural gastrin plus the amino acid alanine and uh, it has all the physiological properties of uh, natural gastrin. Now, uh, next very important hormone that is uh, cholecystokinin, uh, which is again peptide in nature and it contains uh, around 30, uh, not around exactly 33 amino acids. It is secreted by eye cells of the mucosa of upper small intestine especially the duodenum and jejuna but a small quantity is also secreted in ileum and uh, the secretion is stimulated by the products of protein and fat digestion and also acid Coming to the uh, actions of uh, cholecystokinin, um, it induces uh, pancreatic juice secretions, which is rich in uh, pancreatic enzyme and bicarbonate. Uh, CCK also causes uh, the contraction of uh, gallbladder and relaxation of the sphincter of Odai. Then it inhibits the gastric emptying and gastric motility. And uh, it also augments the contraction of uh, pyloric sphincter while it increases the motility of the intestine. Uh, there was another effect. Mm. This CCK, this uh, also has a tropic effect on the pancreas. So as a whole, it is responsible for stimulating the digestion of fat and protein. Uh, and uh, it also induces uh, satiety by acting through hypothalamus. There must be some factors which uh, govern the release of cholecystokinin. The most potent stimulator is uh, lipid, while peptones and amino acids they also increase its secretion. And then uh, it is uh, secreted in response to the cholecystokinin releasing factor also. You should know that uh, once the cholecystokinin is released, it brings a positive feedback where because of the enzyme release, more digestive products are formed which bring about even more cholecystokinin and uh, it stops only when these digestive products move to the next part. The next one is uh, secretin 
again it's a, a peptide hormone in nature and its structure is uh, uh, very similar to uh, glucagon, VIP, GIP and uh, it is stored in an inactive form which is uh, called uh, pro-secretin its half-life is around uh, 5 minutes now uh, Secretin is secreted by S cells which are located in the mucosa of uh, upper small intestine I uh, mean uh, all parts, duodenum, jejunum and ileum Now the secretion is uh, increased by products of protein digestion and uh, bile acid, fatty food and increased acidity in the duodenal contents like uh, when the pH is uh, less than uh, uh, 5 or even less than 4.5 and uh, secretin's release is inhibited by uh, again by the somatostatin now the actions Okay, I would suggest you to make a chart or flashcards to memorize these actions of all the GI hormones. Well, uh, that's up to you. So the uh, secretin, it stimulates pepsin, pancreatic bicarbonate and biliary bicarbonate secretion. And it also has trophic action on the exocrine pancreas. Then uh, it inhibits not only the gastric acid secretion but also its motility and emptying. By causing constriction of the pyloric sphincter, you may find it interesting that uh, it enhances the actions of polycystokinin on. Uh, pancreatic excretion now this hormone may sound new to you motilin is a polypeptide in nature containing uh, 22 amino acids and uh, it is secreted by enterochromaffin cells and M cells in the mucosa of stomach, duodenum and jejunum the interesting thing is that its levels are increased in uh, interdigestive periods and when food is ingested there is a suppression of the secretion of motilin. In fact uh, motilin is a regulator of the migrating motor complexes or you can call it uh, MMCs uh, that I will explain later anyway so like that it controls the motility of gastrointestinal tract between the meals the other actions include accelerating the gastric emptying then it increases mixing and propulsive movements of small intestine and increases peristalsis in colon Keeping uh, an account of these actions, uh, physicians sometimes they prescribe uh, erythromycin to treat uh, intestinal hypomotility uh, because uh, uh, this drug with its uh, motilin receptors activity, activating property, it may help in diabetic gastroparesis and dyspepsia. Moving on to somatostatin, uh, which basically is a growth hormone inhibitory hormone. It is again peptide in uh, nature and it was first found in uh, hypothalamus. But in uh, gastrointestinal tract, it is secreted by D cells, precisely the uh, precisely stomach and um, upper part of small intestine 
so you can see that it is uh, uh, presented in uh, two forms the somatostatin 14 from uh, the hypothalamus and somatostatin 28 from the gastrointestinal tract Excretion is uh, uh, stimulated by the acid in the lumen and uh, also the presence of uh, chyme with glucose and proteins in stomach and small intestine. And uh, what actions it exerts? Well, uh, one word, uh, inhibition, okay, because it is a statin. It uh, inhibits the secretion of uh, gastrin, secretin, GIP, and motilin. Also inhibits the secretion of exocrine pancreas. Um, actions of uh, somatostatin on uh, the gastrointestinal tract, they result in uh, increased fluid absorption and decreased secretion from intestine as well as uh, decreased bile flow and uh, gallbladder contraction then uh, there is a uh, decreased gastric acid secretion and motility plus uh, decreased absorption of glucose amino acids and triglycerides uh, now mentioning inhibition brings me to another hormone uh, GIP which stands for uh, gastric uh, inhibitory peptide well, uh, its uh, new name is uh, glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide and it's a member of uh, the secretin family. Uh, now it is uh, secreted by the K cells in the mucosa of duodenum and jejunum. And uh, GIP receptors, they are found on the beta cells of pancreas. And the secretion is stimulated by glucose and fats. Now, uh, what's your guess about the actions of this hormone? Although the name already is very suggestive. Yes, it stimulates insulin release and uh, inhibits gastric acid secretion by directly inhibiting the parietal cells or indirectly inhibit the gastrin release via somatostatin. And then uh, it has a mild effect in uh, decreasing the gastric motility also. Well, we got a VIP now. This uh, vasoactive intestinal peptide, it contains uh, 28 amino acids with a half-life of uh, 2 minutes in circulation. It is uh, released in response to uh, esophageal and uh, gastric uh, distension, also to vagal stimulation and uh, to the fatty acid and ethanol in duodenum. Keep in mind that uh, amino acid and glucose, they do not affect the uh, VIP release. Now, uh, I will just, uh, you know, narrate the actions of VIP and uh, if you want, you can take notes. Uh, this hormone seems to induce uh, smooth muscle relaxation in stomach and uh, gallbladder. And also stimulate the secretion of water in the pancreatic juice and bile. Then it causes the inhibition of gastric acid secretion and uh, absorption from the intestinal lumen. It also stimulates pepsinogen secretion from uh, the chief cells. Interestingly, uh, VIP, it is uh, also found in heart and it causes a coronary vasodilation through its effect on uh, the cardiovascular system. So, here comes the famous ghrelin. 
it's a recently discovered peptide hormone and it is uh, synthesized by the epithelial cells in the fundus of stomach. Now mainly it is uh, secreted by the auxentic cells in the mucosa of stomach. Its secretion is increased during uh, fasting and the secretion is decreased when the stomach is full. Now uh, write down the actions. Number one, it uh, promotes the secretion of growth hormone. Then it induces appetite and food intake by acting via feeding center in the hypothalamus. And then it also stimulates the gastric emptying. And now we are left with a minor one, which is uh, peptide yy and uh, for this hormone fat is the major stimulant mm, it is uh, released from uh, the jejunum and uh, what does it do it uh, inhibits the gastrointestinal motility And finally, uh, here is a list of uh, some other hormones which are believed to act on uh, the gastrointestinal tract because they are uh, secreted by the mucosa of uh, our GIT. Uh, now, if I assume right, very few of you might have drawn a chart of actions. So, as the rest of you expected, here I made it for you, but I have included only uh, major gastrointestinal hormones. And uh, this could uh, help you in memorizing the actions. Other than uh, hormones, uh, Gastrointestinal tract, it is affected by non-neural signaling molecules. And uh, these molecules, they act in a paracrine fashion. The examples of uh, these molecules, they may include uh, histamine, prostaglandins, and uh, also uh, somatostatin. And once again, I, and only I, make the effort to make a chart for you. Now in this chart, uh, you can see that uh, histamine is released in uh, stomach, whereas both the prostaglandins and the somatostatin, they are more widespread in their release and also in their actions. Uh, well, now, students, uh, it is my turn to ask you a question. It uh, might have come to your observation that uh, when someone takes an aspirin, it usually is followed by heart burning sensation. So, why is that so? This could be a viva question. If I am the examiner, I would definitely ask that. So, give me the answer. Well, you see the prostaglandins, they are cyclooxygenase products derived from arachidonic acid. Now, uh, these prostaglandins, they have uh, a significant role in maintaining the mucosal integrity. So, what does a tiny aspirin do? Actually, aspirin and uh, other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, they are cyclooxygenase pathway inhibitors. So can you understand now how NSAIDs, they can cause uh, stomach irritation? So here I leave you with this thought and next time we will start 
a new topic inshallah